To be honest with you, this war is actually pretty civil. I'm Ryan, your host of The Toast. I'm a little late to the party reviewing Civil War because I've had a bunch of dental work done and basically I've been talking like sloth from the Goonies for the past couple of days. Anyway, we're here now and, like, the review even matters because judging from the money this movie's made, you've already seen it by now. But what the heck, I'm gonna do it anyway. So you all know the story of Civil War by now, you know, they instigate an event and then, like, should superhumans be registered by the government, kept in check, or are they allowed to do whatever they want free? And there's two sides. There's Tony, who's all about keeping them in check, and then there's Steve, who's like, no, we're our own unit, we're our own freedom, America. So assuming you won't know all that, I mean, Civil War is a movie that still needed to be made. It breaks up the cliche hero versus villain and turns it into a much more intelligent and diplomatic form of storytelling. Because we're going to talk issues. Well, we're not going to talk issues. I'm just going to let the movie do that. I'm just going to talk about the movie. Now, I'm not saying this movie isn't full of action, because, boy... Is it full of action? But the action it does have has a whole new flavor to it because there's some very internal battle between our heroes. Not some comic book villain or shady organization, this is just a bunch of buddy fights. None more entertaining than the fight between Winter Soldier and Falcon. I mean, they're on the same side, but they're fighting over the friendship of Cap and it's hilarious. So yeah, it's a bunch of buddy fights, but because of that, everyone's really pulling their punches and not trying to hurt each other. Except for Black Panther. He is out for blood. In this movie full of friends versus friends where it's all kind and nice at the end of the day, then you got Black Panther, this wild card, this wild cat, who is purely there to murder Bucky. I really like Black Panther. He was cast well and he pounced all the time, which I thought was really good thing to do for a character named Black Panther. Still don't understand why he's super fast, though. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, Tom Holland as Spider-Man, he did a really good job. I, I, I'm impressed. I'm impressed with the guy, or kid, I guess, because he's really playing a very young Spider-Man. I mean, seriously, he's being ordered around the battlefield like an intern. Now, there wasn't too much Spider-Man in the film, which I'm glad, because, you know, that's for his own movie. The taste of the new Spider-Man was great for this one. But I was surprised at how much Peter Parker there was. I did not expect there to be a whole lead-up to the Spider-Man thing. I thought it would just show up like a big surprise, but no, no, there's a lot of Peter Parker and hot Aunt May. Why does she get hotter? I swear, they're casting her and, and even animating her hotter and hotter in each generation. I, I don't I don't get it. What's wrong with the old Aunt May? Oh, weird sex appeal. Marketing. Everything's gotta be sexy. It's the times we live in. Scarlet Witch strangely close to her comic book probability altering origins because she changes the outcome of pretty much every fight. Okay, what other characters were in this? There was a lot. Uh, Vision. Vision was awesome. Paul Bettany as Vision, he's so kind of proper and yet bumbling at the same time. He's super powerful yet he has so much heart and I'm loving that they're developing the relationship with Wanda. And we only got to spend a tiny bit of time with Vision in Age of Ultron and now we he's fleshed out really nicely in this film. Uh, Ant-Man, Ant-Man is back. He's a big deal, big deal in this movie. Okay, so Cap and Tony, the unstoppable force meets the immovable object. With them, the film centers around this very potent issue of accountability. When you, when you think about what havoc heroes have caused in these movies, it makes you feel guilty for enjoying their exploits. It's kind of a downer. Title for the next Avengers movie, Avengers Collateral Damage. But it worked. The issues presented in this film really do get in your head and you try and pick a side, but both sides have their merits, both sides have their drawbacks, and on the drive home, I was having a debate. Now, yes, Civil War is about these issues, but really there's no villain in it apart from Baron Zemo. Well, he's not a Baron in this, he's just named Zemo. But anyway, a movie, you say characters are only defined by their villains. This movie doesn't have a villain of sorts. Basically, the character arcs between the longest-running MCU characters, Iron Man, Captain and Marvel, comes to a head in this film, and it just the, the conflict inflates like a balloon, and Zemo is the pin that pops it. That's all he is. He's a very, 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 very small player, but he just does the job to set this conflict off. And he does it in a very effective way. I'm not going to spoil it, but put it this way. Batman v Superman. You st use this whole movie to try and set up Batman versus Superman. Civil War does it with like the playing of one videotape. That's all it took, one video, and the audience completely understands. You've already had the setup through multiple movies with these characters, and that's something the MCU does well. It takes its time, spreads it over a lot of movies. I mean, sure, it churns the movies out like it's a big money-making machine, but it does have the advantage of building that time with the characters. Then when we hit the crescendo of the film, Captain America versus Iron Man, all I could think of was one of them lying on the floor going, Martha! Or in this case, I guess it would be Peggy! I had a one-legged friend named Peggy! We're best friends now. Now with the whole Team Steve, Team Tony, Team Captain America, Team Iron Man, I don't really like when people join teams for movies. Like, kind of like the whole Team Edward and Team Jacob thing. It's just dumb. This one is a bit more poignant, and I guess I would probably side more to 
cap. Mainly because when you're under the control of a government organization, I mean, they've already been compromised and infiltrated so many times. And if I were the weapon, the gun, I'd rather pull my own trigger than let someone else point me and pull my trigger. That does not sound right. Then again, Tony has some great points. You have to have a modicum of control when you're dealing with superhumans that can just crack the earth in half. Maybe that's exaggerating a little bit. It's big picture, and Tony takes everything into the big picture, and it makes him seem a lot colder about this, where Cap is a lot more personal, he's got a lot more heart invested in this. What I find funny is both Steve and Tony, at some point in the movie, meet characters that give them this fantastic one-liner advice that support their side of the argument perfectly, and really drive them on. It's a little convenient, but, you know, it's good writing. The whole point of this movie is to show you the argument, show you the debate, make you think and then give you one of the best superhuman fights put on screen. Excellent execution, brilliant action, and stimulating debate. What more can you ask for? Even though it was a little overcrowded with characters and it felt like an Avengers light kind of movie, it was still something different, and that's what we needed. And you can't have a war with only two people. You have to have all these other characters. And the book, I mean, is full, full of Marvel characters. So it is a good excuse to have Avengers light. And as much as I enjoyed this movie, it was kind of a Cap and Bucky story movie main, more than a Civil War movie. But the two of them integrated really well. Like, I mean, it got a little one-sided at the end. But you kind of, you have to narrow it down. I mean, it's a big picture movie. And then by the end of the movie, it's narrowed down into this, like, focused point which is what you need, and, and it worked well, and I'm gonna give this movie... I wanna give it a toast, but there's something about it that I, I don't quite know that... Uh, oh, well, whatever, where's my mug? A toast to Civil War. <laughs> Another great and entertaining Marvel movie, but I gotta say that my favorite part is the Doctor Strange trailer at the beginning! The one thing I will say is I think Marvel and, and Disney is kind of chickening out a bit when it comes to who can get hurt and who can die and whatnot. I, th I, th I think we need more. We need more consequences. I mean, this whole movie is about consequences of the actions. And you do get to see that in this movie. I just think you need to see more of it in the big picture, in the big run of Marvel movies. It's There's just not enough. And I'm not saying I want these characters to die, but... You kind of have to for the greater good of the story. I mean, when you want to instigate an emotion in an audience, you can't just always have the really orgasmic kind of, wow, this movie is fantastic and exciting. Sometimes you do have to have the feels and you have to have the mourning for these characters. And, and that, I think, gets you invested more than splat kapow action. Anyway, I'll pr stop prattling on about Civil War because you've already seen it by now. I should probably be talking spoilers, but, you know, you have to play it safe. So anyway, if you want to see more from me, click, click, click it. You can't see me pointing because I've got a frickin' shield on my arm. Click, click, click away, and I will catch you next time. Cheers. So we've got the Winter Soldier. No one we need is a Summer Soldier, an Autumn Soldier, and a Spring Soldier. And we've got a team of super seasonal assassins. Maybe that's who are in the tanks in the Hydra facility. Oh. <gasps>